Welcome everybody to Garage Gamers! Hey! That's, that's the <laughs> Perfectly timed. Uh, we're going to be doing another video review. Oh. <laughs> Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 2! Watch Dogs 2! The game that's already out and this is actually kind of quite late. But... It's a bit late, but uh, they had a bit of um, issues with their multiplayer, their streaming seamless multiplayer business. Yeah. So that's all... Well, it's sorted out. I haven't noticed any issues with it. So we'll say it's sorted out for now. Mm. Um, so I wanted to wait till that was under control um, before I gave my final review. Yeah, that, that excuse Because have, <laughs> no, have you seen that IGN's been doing these uh, review in progress? And it's like, it just people can wait. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> how, how they that impatient anyway? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just say yeah. So let's start with... Watch Dogs 1, you played it. Yeah, yeah, okay, so uh, Watch Dogs 1, I was um, actually a big fan of. Weirdo. Yeah, well, a lot of people a lot of people were dissing on it, and I don't know, I don't really know why. It, I didn't play it. Yeah, I had, I had one person kind of tell me they didn't like it because there was so much hype leading up to it that it kind of like wore thin by the time it actually got released. Um, there were other people that were dissing it because... Um, the graphic downgrade. Remember that? No. The three demos were showing better graphics than when it actually uh, came out. Yeah, I didn't think it was that. I, I wasn't really missing anything there. I, I, I don't know. Ba basically, for me, like, I, I really got in. I was, I was saying things like it was, I thought it was better than GTA oh. and stuff like that at the time. My notes. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I was saying things like it was basically better than GTA. And that, was, that, that would get people wrong. Better than GTA 4? 4, yeah. Yeah, okay, 4. Fair enough. I yeah, think. yeah. Um, Not 5. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, well, actually, no, five. Yeah, five. This man's on crack. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's it, right? And everyone everyone hates me for it, right? And, look, I like, I enjoyed GTA Five as well. I didn't, I didn't get stuck in the multiplayer, but uh, I just played through the story, and I enjoyed it, and it, it was all fine. Um, and I'm not really sure if I stick by that statement, but all I can say is that I actually... <laughs> You're not I, sure I, you stick I actually... By. Yeah, because, uh, look, I... I don't know. I just like them for different reasons. That's the thing. And I think, ultimately, like, I kind of just preferred... Watch Dogs myself, just because I kind of like the premise. I like the characters more. Um, I'll be honest, the story wasn't as good as GTA Five was, and the story's a big thing for me. Um, and obviously, there's there's more freedom and more things you can do in GTA Five than you can in Watch Dogs, so you're a bit limited there. But I like the. This is where it separates from Number Two, and this would be kind of a good segue. I actually really liked the kind of more serious sided hacking nature of the first one. And when I saw the direction they were heading in with the second one, I just lost all interest. I didn't want another freaking gangster open world game. I didn't care about little douchebags and hoodies going around graffitiing shit everywhere and trying to fight for the people. I, I just wanted, like, I wanted, like, kind of more, um, I don't know, I, I kind of like the more cyber Deus serious. Deus Ex? Well, yeah. That's I, what you want. No, you want Deus Ex. I, I don't want Deus Ex. That's I, hacking. That's a completely different. That's like a whole Blade Runner feeling. That's but it's a whole hacking. different thing. Hacking. It's a whole different thing. Um, I no, I just like forget Deus Ex. I like the Watch Dogs that element, and I can I consider them a completely different thing. I love Deus Ex. I don't love Watch Dogs anywhere near as much as Deus Ex. Um, but I really liked some of the characters in that game. Um, the story. Like I like the main character too. Like I thought he was alright. He was he was a little bit, bland. a little bit bland. But yeah, but like with the whole face wrap and everything it was fine it was good um yeah so i'm a bit i'm a negative now like i thought i thought the first one was good i didn't think it warranted a sequel are we reviewing the first one here we're talking about this no, first this is one important. This is important okay because um this is a real key thing i think <laughs> because this is actually where we where i'm getting to the first one was really good and when i saw this the direction i was taking with the second one i lost complete interest right so this is where I was getting to, and it's to a point where I'm not even going to buy the game. I don't care how good it is. It, I just it doesn't it doesn't appeal to me, at all. All of a sudden, I've gone from like loving it and praising it, calling it better than GTA, to not giving a damn about this sequel. Okay. All right. So I went the opposite route. I didn't care for the first one. It didn't look interesting to me. Um, it just looked like a poor man's GTA. So I was just like, eh. It just. I don't know, the world looked too drab and boring, and I was just, nothing lured me in. So this one was all bright and colourful, and I'm all about the bright and colourful. So I was like, <laughs> hell yeah, bring it on. 
Um, what's the difference? It's not any more colourful than the first oh, one. Oh, it's it? very colourful. It's yeah? just, oh, it's oozing with style, this game. So, this one's set in San Francisco. San Francisco is already more colourful. I mean, there's freaking oh, it's everything. You've got like the woods and the hills, and then you've got like the ocean side and the Golden Gate Bridge, and there's just like clubs and neons, and oh, it's just, it's awesome. It's like a mini Tokyo. Mm -hmm. It's freaking awesome. Okay. Um, so anyway, but we'll get to that later. So story-wise, I thought it was a bit douchey in the trailers. Like, I thought, oh, God, it's going to be like what you said. It's just going to be like idiot gangsters slash hipsters <laughs> going out being like, yeah, we're hackers, tagging us, graffiti shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fortunately, it's not like that. Um, the main guy, Marcus, is actually a really likable character. Um He's real serious. Like, he's not just a douchebag. Like, he, he's like one of us. Like, when yeah. you're serious and you need to and, be, you are serious. And don't right, he doesn't have to be serious to be no, like no, no. Yeah, I just no. want to make disclaimer. And that, that, yeah. that's what I'm saying. He goes from serious, but then when he wants to have fun, like, they make some jokes back and forward, and, and it works really well. I, I think the 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 story and the scripting is really well so he's done. So he's not a little prick? No, no, okay. not at all. all right. um, and they've all got their own unique... All the characters are very unique, so you've got the typical, like, nerdy guy who sits inside all the time on his computer, and he's just very, like, I, I don't have a social life. Yeah. Like, he's that sort of guy. Yeah, well, you kind of got to have that. In, but in he is game. so relatable, because everyone knows that type of guy. Yeah. Then there's, um, you know, the, the main uh, female is the fight for power, like, she's going to help lead the movement, but she's very grounded. She's not just, like, some over-the-top you know, feminist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Recent fight for power, that's instantly where... I, I know, that's <laughs> what you're you thinking. I know. <laughs> oh, well, I think it's what they're thinking. <laughs> they're, like, they're characters that are borderline on stereotypes, but they don't come across that way. Um, okay. Which is good. It's not all, like, in your face, in your face. And by the way, feminism is great, but we're just thinking of the over-the-top... Um, yeah. I don't even think of that at all. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't drag me with this. <laughs> um, but... Just fight for the power. <laughs> uh, and then there's then there is one douchey guy. There's always one douchey guy. Yeah. Who has his moments, but he's a bit... You know, he wears a, this computerized mask, and so his eyes are like emojis and it's crap, and he's got like a... He sounds like Glitch from Game Bug Past. <laughs> and, you search that one at gamebug.com.au and um, yeah and they, they work well together they all have their own elements of what they bring they all have their own skill sets and they work well together as a team uh, so, so are they rebelling against the government? so I like the theme that it's based on because it's happening in the real world so the theme is that my question. yeah I'm getting to it oh, okay. calm down right, okay. uh, <laughs> so basically technology has progressed in the game the way that we're going in which everything is being monitored your your tv is recording you simple you, yes no will do <laughs> well, i forgot what your question was then. <laughs> sorry i'm just pulling your legs go keep going go. so yeah everything's recording data everything's taking data we all see this happening already in today's day and age i mean those the samsung tvs were listening in on people and your Google phone is stealing information. All Xbox, this crap. Xbox is watching you. Yeah, all that crap. So that's These what's happened. are watching us. That's what's happened is... It's not for long. Basically, an organization has come out and said, install this with us and we will protect your home and we will protect your privacy and all that, when really they're just taking all your data and selling it off to other corporations. Yeah. That stuff happens in the real world. Yeah. So it's kind of... This is where we're going, so I like to see that. Sounds like Google. It, yeah, <laughs> and it's funny because Google is in this, oh. but they're called Noodle. Noodle. Yeah, <laughs> and so you can actually, Subtle. and it's like a representation of their actual workplace with the slides and everything. Like it's <laughs> perfectly done. Um, and yeah, there's like crazy things where uh, one example, one of the major banks uh, that does insurance is actually paying for data on people of how many times they're ordering fast food so that every time they're ordering fast food and stuff per month, if it's going up, they put more of a premium on their insurance 
so that they got to pay more because they're more at risk because they're eating junk food all the time. So it's like little intricacies there where you're like, huh, what assholes? Like, In the story. Yeah. 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 And it, it's really, really well done. Like the story is just actually top notch. I, I Top notch story. Yeah, I thought it was going to be crap, but I'm really engaged in it because I can see this happening in the real world and I, I, it's something that I don't want to happen. Yeah, yeah. Ubisoft do do a couple of like those types of games. Like, I think The Division was a little bit like that with you know these kind of what-if scenarios with the world the way it is, if we yeah. keep doing it, you know, with the whole currency and stuff and the germ transition and then all of a sudden causing an outbreak and then looters. And <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, you know, and then you got like people power fighting to oppress governments um or sorry the government's oppressing the people that's a very that's a very assassin's creedy type of attitude there so yeah they do they do like those rise against the government type of things what's, what's going on in france but <laughs> well think about it i mean we've already seen this those groups like anonymous like those are starting already they're the hacker mm. groups it's it's taking something and showing well this is probably going to be what the next level is and it's believable because it's not so far-fetched Okay, what, what's the difference in the gameplay between this yeah. and the first one? Uh, so I didn't play the first one, <laughs> so what? I can't compare the first one. <laughs> I thought you were comparing it earlier. <laughs> no, um, so the gameplay in this is very fluid. Everything moves perfectly. It's a bit floaty. They got the parkour, parkour stuff. Yeah, it's not really parkour -y, like Semi parkour. Yeah, semi. It's not yeah. like you're playing. Because um, they had semi parkour in the first Watch Dogs. Yeah, well. you're not running off walls and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's you know you you just hold the right trigger and he'll he automatically the kind of jump over. Extendable things. baton thing, which he. It, no, he's actually got. Does he use a skateboard or something? No, I thought it was a yo-yo, <laughs> but yo -yo. no, I thought it was, but it's actually like a string with a freaking eight ball on it. I'm like, that's pretty badass if you whack someone in the head with that. <laughs> And you can it's choke people with it. Interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 okay. it's different. Yeah, it's different. Street weapons. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you've got cool things like, you know, you've got a little uh, RC drone that you can fly up and... That's very, that's on, very Ubisoft. ...spy yeah. on things. You've you, got you, a little... do, you do hacking from your phone, I mean. Uh Yeah, yeah, you, can yeah. Do, you do the hacking from the phone. You've also got a little RC drone. Uh, so you've got the, the, the copter one, and then you've got one that um, is called the jumper. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little two-wheel remote control car but it can also like jump so you can yeah climb up to different areas and then that can manually hack in and get through so basically you can get into a scenario where you need to break into this building you can go in you can just go guns blazing and just murder everyone mm -hmm. you can go in and you can zap and tase everyone to knock them out so you don't kill them or you can literally not go in the building and just get all your gadgets and stuff to do it for you and that sort of level of freedom is really cool as well. Um, because I usually hate, like, and the same with Dishonored too, which I reviewed recently, it does the same thing, gives you that freedom. I never really care for stealth games where they force it on you. But when it's an option that you don't have to do, it's kind of more intriguing because you're like, I'm going to see if I could do this. And so I found that it was actually fun to, to do some of these um, missions stealthy. And then at least you know if, if shit goes sour, you can actually kill the guys and get out of there or tase them or whatever. Which, and it's hard. Which it's what, really what game hard. is what game do you think is a stealth game where they force it on you? Um, there was a couple of those games back in like the old days, like I think mainly PS2 and 360 era. Splinter Cell Conviction not Conviction. Yeah, yeah. No, well, Splinter Cell in general, yeah. No, but there was the double agent, I think it was, where if you got seen, the mission was over. I hate that. Yeah. Like, why is it that... Well, it's, if not, I got... it's not always. It's only certain missions. Yeah, only certain mind. missions. Yeah. But I just hate that in general. That should never be a gameplay mechanic. That's <laughs> well, so dumb. Like, if you get yeah. seen, run away. Like, why <laughs> is it that... Oh, no, you're seen. That's it. End of story. Like, I hate that. So I like in this that you can run away... And, you know, it's like GTA. You've got your police coming after you and all that. Yeah. Um, then they've do, also got gangs you, Are you limited well. to, like, uh, hacking in order to prevent police catching you and stuff like that? Like, No, you can go GTA style and just drive away and... Shoot out the, win at the window? Because um, normally can... you drive away, but you have to actually hack to stop the police chasing you. Like, you're hacking, you can change the traffic lights ahead, or you can raise the, uh, the boom gates behind you. Yeah, you can do all that stuff. Or you but can, that's the only way you could do it. No, you can get out of the car and kill the cops if you want and then shoot out their tires or 
you know, and just drive away. I remember if they had a gun in, in Watch Dogs first. Yeah, game. you had to have, right? Did you? I don't know if you did, because you had the baton. It has to have Oh, there gun. was a gun. Yeah, there was. Yeah, because yeah. I remember the, like leaning behind the car. Yeah, there was. Yeah, um, and then you can do a thing where he leans back in the car so that if they drive past them, they don't see that you're in there. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. cool little thing, and it actually yeah. works. Like, there's missions where you've got to hack data from somewhere where you've got to be in the proximity of, say, it's a, a vehicle and they're beaming out some information that you've got to collect. So you've got to drive up without them seeing. So you can lay back in the car so that they don't see you and they'll walk past and not notice you and you can do it that way. Or they just see or, some guy in the car going... <laughs> <laughs> or you can have your drone. You know, there's all different ways to approach it. Yeah. And there was one mission that just... I died on it, I don't know, 10, 15 times and it was doing my head in. And then I just thought, wait a minute. And you, you put all the pieces together. So one little thing that I upgraded, and this is cool, is you can send data to gangs saying that this guy is now part of a rival gang. And so they'll come in and attack that guy. So that you basically send a hit on that guy and they'll come in and start having a war. And you mm. can just watch that unfold while you go do your business. So I went and sat in my car, laid back, and let these two fight over it, and they didn't notice me. Whereas before, I was getting killed, I was getting shot, I was getting spotted all the time. So you can kind of instantly stop gang warfare, like just... <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. You can even do it so you can put a, a hit on people from the police. So if you're fighting a gang, you can you send information to the police, and it's like, uh, un, uh, known suspect has been spotted uh, entering the crime scene now. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And you watch the cops and them fighting, you're just like, I'm going yeah um there's so much to talk about uh visually it's amazing it's one of the best looking games i've seen like yeah. for an open world it's freaking gorgeous like oh it's just so colorful and the the I, animations are so smooth like the I, way he moves and i wish I, I wish i actually could compare it and i wish you could compare it we wish we had a little comparison maybe we could do like a little comparison video between the first yeah. and second game yeah because i want to see like I'm I'm I've been adamant that the first game was fine graphically, mm. but I want to see if you've just called this one one of the best things you've seen, then I want to see what kind of difference we're talking about here between the first and second game, if any at all. Yeah, it yeah. it is very arcadey when you're driving, like it's very, um, you know, like very f floaty sort of, sort of feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, which makes it more fun at least, mm. but it can be a bit frustrating. Um. But yeah, visually, just those animations, not so much the cars, but when you're running and moving and interacting, it just feels natural. He doesn't look stiff or like a robot at all. It, I just, I don't know, I really like how it just looks in that way. Hmm. Um, what else can and I say? The, the music, just, you, this is, you, you mentioned some of the music oh, for this one. So the music is cool. So it's it's got your pre-set uh, radio stations. So you've got rock and rap and you know pop and all that. And you've got a little Spotify type thing on your phone. And so it'll flash and says new music is nearby. And you pop that out and you download new songs. So while you're driving around, you can unlock new songs. Mm, that's and, pretty clever. And so I'm doing this mission. And this mission is, you know, I don't want to spoil it. But you're in a car doing crazy stunts. And it's got a purpose. And they just start playing friggin' Turbo Lover by Judas Priest. And I'm like, that is so awesome that is like one of the best songs and it fit perfectly i'm like they nailed that and then it wasn't in my it wasn't in my song track list so yeah. i spent ages i was driving everywhere trying to find it and i found it and i'm like yes <laughs> now i just have it on repeat while i'm playing oh, God. like that's a collectible that you can actually get behind is finding new music to listen to while you play what's the best full of crap music though yeah, like, yeah. yeah there's some <laughs> crap as well there's megadeth in it though that's cool and, yeah. yeah it's good stuff there's a lot of punk this music is... and you know it's, I, I like some of the variety in there okay I'd, so have, to, I'd have to check out voice acting's listing. really good excuse me voice acting's really good sound effects are good uh, music's everyone, good everyone's giving fairly decent reviews yeah. in this one. I, but I, what I really want to understand is is the key difference because like we, with all those people hating on the first one it's modern it, it it's just it makes you modern you can, yeah you can relate to these characters you can really like you look at these characters and go I know someone like that or yeah that's sort of how I feel or they're very relatable and really? I think like the first guy he, he, look, he, they, they look from the outside really douchey yeah 
And maybe, I guess maybe we look wants... douchey to some people. No, at we times. look awesome. No. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, man. Like, see, just that little kind of graffiti doing going gangster. Yeah, the, the graffiti is a side mission. That's just something. Not if just you a mission, to... but it's a stereotype that goes with the, the character that they're going for here. But if you think about these groups, that's what they do because it's all about getting yeah, your, but, your voice out. Yeah, yeah, and... but this is, I just don't care for that stuff. But but the other stuff was, was in Dwarf Dogs 1 was just more intriguing to me. So I'm just wondering, like, is the difference between the two games just the characters or is it something uh, else? I think it's the characters. I think the characters... Because the, there, there was an awesome hacker chick in the first one and again, I can't do a spoiler of what... The ending is basically, but um, yeah, it's this girl character, the main character, and a couple other ones in there as well. We're just like, I thought they were great. Yeah, and I thought that warranted it being a good game, but apparently it's not, and apparently this this one is because it's getting fairly decent reviews. I can see across the board because I um, think it's people. Why why are people like so anti the first one and so not anti this one? Well, I've heard in the first one that he was like, oh, the something about his his niece or something they did something to his niece or is that what it was in about? the first game yeah and he was all like i'm angry whereas this is more light-hearted <laughs> like they're they're pissed off well, that, yeah because but... was well if this isn't really spoiled they, they they kidnapped her okay okay so why is that bad that he's angry about that i'm pretty angry about that too like, i don't know just bad? because i think everyone's like <laughs> oh, it's so cliche like oh i'm gonna avenge her you know like this one is this one is about all of... It's not about one person. It's about all of the city that they live in and globally. I mean, it's it's what's happening. We're, well, no, world, the world no, is turning to shit in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, this is the... Again, Watch Dogs 1, it went all into, like, uh, human slave trafficking and everything. got really political. So that can't be the reason either. Well, well yeah. that's in this too. So I think it was just that main character. He must have robbed people the wrong way. Like... I don't didn't, know, maybe it was the voice didn't, acting. Didn't seem to bother people when they first saw the demo of E3. So. I don't know. Yeah. I really can't say. Yeah. As a, so going People through, are weird. You're weird. You're all weird. Visuals. No, you're good. Amazing. The other people. The other people. <laughs> Visually, it's amazing. Gameplay is fun, fast, you're good. fluid. Uh, only slight uh, screen tearing and slight um, slowdown every now and then. Nothing major. No crazy glitches. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's but not again, an easy it's game. It's nothing... Like, you know, I haven't really said anything different with this list of things, like with the first one. I, I just try to get to the bottom of it, that's all. Well, I don't know what the first one's are. Why don't, don't you have it. all the answers, or <laughs> I didn't play the first one. I'm just saying why I like this. Yeah, yeah that's okay. And, but this, and is, the but reason this is a question, why I like this. This is a question for the people. It's a question for the people. So if you've played both of them and you feel passionately about one, not so passionate about the other, let us know why. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm not hearing anything particularly different other than the, the character types. But yeah, that's so maybe, what it is. It relates more to me, so I... I yeah, but, that, I mean, we're judging an entire game off this. Like, but I'm and, also and, judging it on the visual appeal. Like, I look at that city in that game, and it's just so bright and colourful and all this sort of stuff, and I'm like, this is up my alley. And the presentation is all retro, 8-bit, and, like... So, like, you'll the menus are all in, like, DOS. You know, like, yeah. how it's typed up, and yeah. then you'll click on, and then... It'll do like pixel art animations and yeah. it's just me. Like I just look at it. I'm like, this is what I like. Lots mm. of color, lots of retro stuff, but also, but nostalgic also, stuff. But also the, fir the first game was original. It's the first time we'd seen this. The second game had a template to go off, feedback to go off, and then they've produced this. So they've got to go to, they've got a leg up from yeah. the word go. Um, anyway. Yeah, it just goes back to what I say. If you've, if, you've, if you've seen this and played this, um, yeah, let us know how you find the differences between the two. I'm just going to check my notes just to see I covered everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, so I will say this. Um, you better be quick because you're running out of battery. <laughs> a lot of the buttons, uh, there's a lot to do. There's so many different buttons that you're using yep. and it can be very overwhelming at times. Like, if you want to access the radio, you've got to hit the select button and then scroll with the right stick... It's just all like, oh, that's... half the time you're like, what do I press? Mm -hmm. You eventually get over that hurdle, yeah. but it is a lot to take in at first. Yeah. That was the only issue, um, apart from, as I said, slight screen tearing and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I just, I, I love uh, the story. I love the music. I love the voice acting, the, the visuals, the graphics. This is it. Yeah. amazing TV reading off notes off the <laughs> Oh, well, I just want to make sure I covered everything. Yeah, cool. It's just, there's nothing, there was nothing bad about it. Like, I'm, I was invested the whole time. As I said, I said to this guy, I played it 10 hours straight in one day on the weekend. I was just nuts. Because I, I, I forced you to review it this way. No, <laughs> you didn't. That was the thing. And it was late. It was getting late. <laughs> and as I said, when I watched that trailer, I was like, oh, this is douchey, you know, people. Like, oh, I just didn't care for it. Okay. But like you just, still into it. I go into the clothing store and you dress him up how you want him to look and you just make him yours, and then yeah. Well, okay, maybe how does, it rate, how does it rate to GTA? Because it's, yeah, it's, it's more very like, GTA. It, like visually, it's on the same bar as GTA. Um, Story wise, it's it's less over the top than GTA because Trevor was nuts. Yeah, it's actually a bit more serious in aspects than GTA. But is it, is it better? Um, Gameplay wise, it's pretty. I would say it's GTA's driving is better. Yeah. Watch Dogs combat is they're pretty much the same. They're they're brown par. I can't they're say on par. I can't say one's better than the other. Oh no! See now you're gonna make all the enemies. I passed the I hereby pass the buck to you. You can hate on him for saying that it's uh... GTA is definitely <laughs> a bigger world. There's definitely a lot more to do in GTA. There's a lot more mini games and stuff like that in GTA. Yeah. Um, it's been built on long enough. Yeah. Well, that, again, yeah, that's got that's GTA Five. I mean, when we're talking, we're about, talking GTA Four. We're always talking about GTA Five. If we're talking about GTA Three or no, 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 Four, you know what I mean? No, but you know what I mean. Five. Know what I mean? About five yeah. So if we're talking about Five, this is only on their second game, and they're already on par with it. I think. Wow. There you go. The next one, cool. they might just have to make a bigger world. I mean, that's the only thing. But. People who live in San Francisco have been saying this is like a perfect representation. Like, it's the closest any game has ever come to one of these worlds that they've made based on a real life city. Well, Ubisoft's yeah, actually, building is in there. You can actually go well, and actually, hack into actually, the building. Ubisoft are actually very good at um, mimicking landmarks. Actually, like mm. if you look at the crew, another game which kind of got canned, I thought a little bit unfair, but the, the world that they captured, the whole United States, was actually pretty well encapsulated. I thought. Um, I mean, obviously, it's all condensed, yeah. but it's all there, and it's yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah. It's it's great, great location. Just everything is good. There's nothing bad I can say, and wow. that's, that's that a, that's... was shocking to me. Yeah, I just I honestly don't believe you. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna finish I this video by saying myself. I don't believe you. I, I, I'm gonna be in complete denial until I play it myself. <laughs> so why I wouldn't say this is like game of the year or something like that is because it is a very tried and true formula. It's like GTA Five. So if you you can't say it's revolutionary not when it's really, it's not a bad thing, it's not but a bad it's thing at all. but it can't be. It's not like this new thing that blows you away because it feels very familiar. You play it and you go, "I've played games like this." Yeah, which is not bad. I mean, look, it's so hard. I can't judge because I haven't played it. So you've got to keep this in mind when I say this. But I play Uncharted Four this year. I play Dark Souls Three this year. It doesn't matter how good Watch Dogs Two is. It's not going to beat those two games in my mind. Yeah. It's just not. It, it's just... And why is that? It, I can't, it's got to be something more than the premise and the concept. It's got to be something more. Yeah. Um, well, you've got to play it. It feels good when you're playing it too. Yeah. And fair, fair call. It's probably got excellent gameplay, excellent graphics, excellent music. This is, again, I don't know if we mentioned this in this episode or the previous one, but we, 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 we give games like an awesomeness rating, which is basically... How we how we feel walking away from the game. Like sometimes you have games that tick all the right boxes, but they're still a boring game, or they're still a shit game, or there's something about well, it. This just this ticked down. every box for me. Yeah. Wow. Literally did, and I was so surprised, and I didn't expect it. Yeah. And that's that's a good thing. So. I still I really want to find this difference. So maybe we'll come back with another video and really compare the two, the the first one and the second one, and really knuckle down this difference. Getting him to play it. Yeah, I'll well, play I the might, first and yeah, you yeah, play well, the second. I think second. we should. I think we should challenge ourselves to that. Um, if, if you think we should, just write in the comments below. Do you have anything else to, uh, else to add, Zorbs? No, I just say buy it. Like, if you've been on the fence about you it, You say buy, buy it. everything. No, but, <laughs> no, 
but last video. Do last... yourself a favor. Buy this now. Dead, Dead Rising. Bye bye. Well, sorry, Dishonored Two is freaking game of the year. That is amazing. <laughs> no way. It is. I, game I of the year. No, not with Uncharted Four and Dark Souls out there. Oh, so. Actually, Inside's game of the year, but it's behind Inside. Oh, good grief. Good um, but yeah, a, a lot of good games this year, this video. and he's going to make a video of how many games he hated this year. So. <laughs> yes, that's true. I think it will, that's on the agenda. So yeah, check out my score. That will be under this video on our website. So, yes, yes. Um, www.gamebug.com.au. Um, what's your name? Steve. No, it's not Steve either. <laughs> Zorbs. Zorbs. It's not I'm my real Steve. name, but I'm not Steve either, so don't call me Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Steve. Sure, Steve. Sure. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> uh, thanks again for joining us, guys. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, or at least, you know, hitting the skip button repeatedly through until you got to the final bit. Uh, <laughs> and we will see you at the next episode if we didn't bore you too much in this one. Bye. Cheers.